The biggest problem with the PlayStation 5 Pro reveal, besides the $700 hefty price tag, is that the presentation just was not that good. It failed spectacularly in showing the enhancements that this new device will offer, something that a company like Digital Foundry, for example, excels at. Some of you may know me for my news reaction videos like this one, and some of you might know me for my work at IGN. Inspired by Digital Foundry to learn how to present things like this myself, I've put together plenty of graphic comparisons and deep dives into the nuance of what makes a game impressive from a technical standpoint. I get to talk to developers about the advantages of running something like Returnal at 1080p so it gets the visual look that they're going for, or how Mass Effect Legendary Edition took a lot of the technology limitations from the 360 era and were able to push them forward in the modern era. I find doing this research interesting because I learn a lot about game design and I get to present that to the audience in a way that's much easier to digest than sitting through lengthy GDC presentations. Sometimes it's about why a game is running well or looks cool, and sometimes it's why that game is not running well. And I want to talk about why this PS5 Pro reveal was largely a bad presentation that could have been saved with better editing and analysis. Here are the things I hope they fix for any future presentation about the PlayStation 5 Pro. <laughs> One of the first things that they open up discussing is ray tracing and they open up with the scene where there is a fight happening over water, but there is no good showcase of ray tracing in this moment. Ray tracing allows for dramatic visual improvements, including reflections off of water or glass. Take real quick, for example, the performance review that Michael Thompson at IGN did for Star Wars Jedi Survivor on the PS5 versus Xbox Series X. At 5 minutes 15 seconds, he takes a shot staring at a glass reflection spot, and he quickly shows what it looks like when that mode is turned off. That very clearly shows you this is ray tracing. This is what ray tracing adds to a scene. In the reflection that they show at the one minute mark in the trailer, what are they showing? If they're going to talk about ray tracing, you need to point it out to the viewer because most people aren't going to see it. And in this shot, maybe they're talking about the robot in the background, but otherwise I don't think it's a good demonstration of what they're trying to show. Fast forward a little bit. At 2.47, what exactly are you trying to show here? Can you point to it? Are you showing a foliage reduction? Because when you look at them side by side, and again, you're also showing it in a very tiny box, which I think was done to draw the eye to what they're trying to show. But when most people are watching this on their phone, you have now reduced the amount of visual availability the viewer has to see the demonstration you're trying to put forward to them. Even things like the Ratchet and Clank PSSR demo are cool, but it's not real. This is a fake visual representation of what AI upscaling would do and is not an actual representation of what it does. What is this AI upscaling doing? Can you show me something like the Gears of War demonstration where they showed what variable rate shading does and how that gives Gears of War 5 a visual advantage as you don't have to completely render the whole scene? It's a very easy to interpret visual display for Gears, but here you are being a little bit unclear with what is actually happening with this really cool AI upscaling tech that you have. And when we're talking about these topics, just remember to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell as I ask you to do this in my serious voice that I've been using for this presentation. Let's get back to it. Another problem with this trailer is artifacting. There's artifacting all over the whole thing. Artifacting often happens when you have either captured at the improper bit rate, therefore compressing the footage, or maybe it happened during export. Maybe you exported at a low bit rate or using the wrong codec. So when you squish your footage down, you get this artifacting issue. And to top it all off, once again, YouTube will compress that footage. And as Last of Us 2 is the first game that we actually see running on the PlayStation 5 Pro, the fact that it is covered with artifacting and compression issues throughout the whole display at around the four minute mark 
it's really, really unfortunate. And it gets worse when you show it side by side. Separately, besides some sharpness here, I think you're trying to show the smoothness of 60 frames per second. And again, I, I just think this is the wrong way to do it. A better way to do it would be to slow down your footage and showcase how much smoother it looks by reducing the speed that you're showing the visual example of 60 versus 30 on screen. It would be even better if you could show something at 120 frames per second versus 60 frames per second like I did with Gears of War 5 for the first template I built for the performance review series over on IGN. Even shots like the Spider-Man 2 image where you are trying to show off the power of the PlayStation 5 Pro have some issues like the shadows in the background, which actually look worse on the PlayStation 5 Pro. This is one example where it would have been great to get somebody from Insomniac on the line to talk about why that is happening. What are you doing here with the engine that really allows you to harness the power of the PlayStation 5 Pro? What enhancements are we seeing besides it looking sharp? When I did my Spider-Man coverage about why that game was such an impressive feat, we got the lead technical director to comment on what was being accomplished. And I find it very odd that one of my favorite developers within Sony Studio and one of the best games Sony has to display utilizes this particular shot, which honestly, I don't think it makes the PlayStation 5 Pro look particularly compelling, but I'm willing to bet there are some scenes like in the lab that have a lot of reflections and particle effects that might have done a better job of showcasing these assets. And the next game you showcase is Ratchet and Clank and you open up by showing it at a slower frame rate without displaying that you have slowed down the frame rate of both shots on the screen anywhere. If you're going to slow down the frame rate to show off visual capability, I think it would be a better idea to illustrate that you are editing it in a way that slows down the frame rate so that the user doesn't think that Ratchet and Clank isn't running as smooth or gets a, a wrong impression about what you're trying to display here. And again, this tiny little box does a disservice to the features that you're trying to show. It creates more negative space outside of the box. And I think, again, you're doing that to get people to focus in on this part of the game, but why not just do a longer clip of the footage slowed down so that people can really immerse themselves in what they're looking at? and pick out the small things that look better for this already incredibly impressive looking game. You are selling a console based off of the minutia of upgrades that are going to be at a player's disposal and you are not giving them the appropriate time necessary to digest that information. Again, with Last of Us 2, you are trying to show off visual fidelity and you are attempting to show, I believe, sharpness here, which is mentioned several times, but I don't think that's quite the way you get people hyped about buying a $700 box. Now, to give them some credit, later in this trailer, I do think that they finally land on this shot of the crowd where you can really see a difference in how clear the crowds are, but you can tell the difference in the wide shot. If you were going to zoom in, I think you should just zoom in and get rid of the box because a lot of people are watching this on their phone. You have now made the difference that you're trying to display even harder to discern. And again, same notes for the Spider-Man 2 asset. I think this is a great example of how much clearer your image is going to look. Is that because of the PSSR technology, the PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution? Tell us more about what is happening in this shot and the details that we should be focusing on. And doing a montage of them all side by side doesn't do a single thing because it's just gameplay of old games we've already played and beaten. If you're going to utilize old titles, you need to make it crystal clear that 
this is the technology we're showcasing. We're utilizing these old games. Here's why this new technology is cool. And it fails to do that. And this was just a smaller note, but there's actually an error in the edit at 540. I noticed that while watching it live, the footage is actually bleeding through from the left to the right clip that could have easily been fixed by just adjusting the crop or moving the asset on the left, like three pixels left. Gran Turismo 7, the focus for this presentation was all about the ray tracing. You can kind of see it on the sides of the car, but this is one time where they should have slowed down the footage and they just didn't. So you can kind of pick it up on the sides of the cars. Are the mirrors utilizing ray tracing like they did in Forza? This was a big technological point in the Forza Motorsport reveal for the Xbox Series X. And while it's mentioned and showcased here, Gran Turismo fans want to know about the nitty gritty. In-game ray tracing was something that was sort of alluded to early on with Gran Turismo 7 marketing, and then they got quiet about it. So this is kind of a big deal. This is fulfilling the promise of what Gran Turismo 7 was going to offer, and it just sort of feels like a footnote here. One of the first games, however, that actually made me perk up and take notice was Hogwarts Legacy. You walk out into this dining room and there's this big, gorgeous painted glass reflection on the ground. And it's a fantastic example of a ray traced reflection to showcase. Now pair that against what they showed at the beginning of the reveal with Star Wars. What are you showing here? What ray tracing are we looking at? You have to explain it because I, I do this and I'm not seeing what ray tracing you're showing off here. Anyway, I, I do think that a lot of the technology that they're trying to showcase here is very compelling. And they gave it to CNET who mastered their exclusive interview at 30 frames per second, meaning that we're not really able to discern anything from the footage that we're showing, especially when it comes to the fidelity of the games we're looking at. Even if they had at least shot the on-camera portions at 60 frames per second, we would have been able to look at the horizon shot that they showcased, for example, and be able to discern that, oh, okay, wow, yeah, I can see that the top one's running at 30 and the bottom one's running at 60. That is a big visual upgrade. This is not in any way denigrating the work that CNET did. It's just a very strange choice to take a device that is touting 4K and 8K and present it at 1080 30 with footage that you shot likely at 1080 45 frames per second so that you had that sort of movie look that film producers go for. This is one instance where you probably should have shot the B-roll at 60 sometimes and then sometimes at 45 frames per second like most like most cam ops would for interviews but CNET's going to do whatever they're going to do. So the only assets that we have from this event is a presentation that doesn't do a good job of showcasing why we should buy the console. We have a 1080p 30 frames per second interview with Scott Stein that was shot likely at 45 frames per second. So we're looking at off screen footage that is shot at 30 or 45 frames per second that's trying to show off 4K 60 frames per second footage that is comparing a PlayStation 5 to a PlayStation 5 Pro. And then the capture was also squished down to 1080p. So it winds up just sort of being a piece about Scott Stein's impressions, which were largely positive, but with less value to the viewer at the end of the piece. Even the trailer that was released after the fact talks about 120 frames per second, a feature that the base PlayStation 5 has and a feature that apparently the PlayStation 5 Pro will have for certain games. However, that was not shown or mentioned at any time during the presentation. I hope that they listen to this and take the feedback to heart because there were so many missed opportunities with this reveal to do something really, really cool with honestly a very, very expensive piece of technology. $700 is a lot of money to be asking somebody. And as somebody who has just ordered the disk drive and stand, which adds an additional $110 after shipping to your cost, you're looking at a hefty, hefty price tag for this device that just had a presentation, which in my opinion, missed the mark in ways that were very avoidable. Why not give somebody like Digital Foundry an opportunity 
to present this the same way they presented the Forza Motorsport exclusive a year or so back. Or why not reach out to Linus Tech Tips or any of the technology brands out there who understand there are different capture requirements for games. I think in the journalism space, there's not a lot of people who do this. So they don't take these things into consideration when you're looking at all the different facets for capture and what you're trying to display and the story that you're trying to tell with these types of presentations. And if even Sony can't get it right based off of the very loud feedback that their community is giving, then my selfish hope would be that they reach out to people like Digital Foundry who know how to present these things, who have presented these things expertly in the past, because this was just a miss. And it really didn't need to be because the games you're utilizing are spectacular and you own the studios that you're displaying. So get them discussing what cool new features gamers are going to get for the games that they love. Maybe they have something planned down the line. I don't know. I don't work at Sony. But thinking about this from a consumer's perspective, that did little to nothing for me. The big takeaway is, okay, games look sharper. And I don't think that's enough for most people to drop $700 on a new piece of hardware. That's what I thought. I would love to hear your thoughts about the PlayStation 5 Pro reveal in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button if you're interested. Hit that like button if you like this video. Thank you so much to all of the members for supporting this channel. I do greatly appreciate you. Your membership does help me make content like this. So thank you. If you want to become a member, click that join button. And before I go, hit that subscribe button one more time because I forgot to turn off the animation. And if you want to hear more about my thoughts on that initial reveal, you can watch my initial reveal reaction right here. But for now, I'm going to get out of here and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.